we're looking at figure 5.4 on page 95 of your textbook. This figure tries to illustrate uh, the marginal abatement cost functions and just goes into more detail about that. So the first thing I want to draw is I want to name the or I want to label the axis. I'm going to write cost on my vertical ax, little zero at the origin and emissions on the horizontal ax. I see the textbook calls it effluence. That's just a synonym for emissions. I prefer emissions. Right, why cost and emissions? Because the marginal abatement cost looks at the clean up cost of a single emission. So that's why we want to look at the cost of decreasing emissions, basically. So if I have a company and there's no restrictions on the amount they can emit, there's no cost involved, they don't have to clean up anything. Let's say then they will emit a maximum amount of E1. So this is, we called it uncontrolled or unrestrained emissions. There's no, they don't have to clean up anything they emit and then when they emit the maximum amount they want, it will be E1. Now if we tell them, no, listen, E1 is too much, you have to decrease your emissions to, let's say, E2. Let's make E2 over here, E2. Um, then maybe initially it would be kind of cheap to decrease the emissions. So let's say it looks something like this. So if, to go from E1 to E2, you see a, a kind of a flat marginal abatement cost curve. If we tell them then, listen, now you have to decrease it further to E3, then you're going to see a sharp increase in, in the price. So this is my marginal abatement cost. Let's call it curve 1. There we go, it's a bit neater. So you can see that initially it was quite cheap to reduce emissions from 1 to 2. So it was a fairly low emission over here. Uh, let's say cost C1. But then when I wanted to reduce it further to E3, the, in cost, the marginal abatement cost increased substantially, right? So the reason for this could be like something uh, this specific, uh, you know, factory. Initially, it's very cheap to just maybe put a filter on, um, you know, the the air uh, air filters on, or um, just a sieve to stop certain residuals going into the water or whatever. So you decrease emissions a bit, and the method is kind of simple, so it's not expensive. But if you want to decrease emissions further, the methods become much more complex and you have to maybe buy new machinery or you have to um, buy expensive chemicals in order to recycle the water or whatever and then your costs increase dramatically. Okay, so I'm just going to take out some of this. Um okay, so let's say uh, I told this company they have to decrease their emissions to a level of, let's call this E star. This is the amount we aim to get, so E star. Now, this is then their marginal abatement cost. So the marginal cost of reducing it to this amount is something like cost, let's make it C star. But the total cost to go from an unrestrained emissions E1 to E star is the total area under the curve. So this is this total area over here. If I want to go from an unrestrained amount of emissions to E star, the green block shows my total abatement cost, where C star shows my marginal abatement cost. Now let's say a couple of years later, um, the same industry, uh, or in the same industry, there's this new technology that lets you, uh, or helps you to abate emissions a lot cheaper, right? So now the abatement cost um, changed. Still, if it's unrestrained, I would still like to emit E1 because the, that's the maximum amount of emissions I have if, I don't, if I'm not restricted to anything. But now it's cheaper for me to Every other unit is cheaper, so let's call this MAC2. Now it's cheaper to decrease my emissions to E star over here. 
Now previously it was C star to decrease my emissions. Now I'm going to say it's C, uh, let's call it 2, C2. So the cost decreased. And what I also want to show you is the total cost. Not only the marginal baking cost, but the total cost decreased. So the total cost went from area, uh, the green area to the, should be pink, but the black area below the MAC2 curve. Um, this curve is quite import important. Probably won't ask you to draw only this in the exam, but I will ask you to draw something else, um, maybe with the MAC curve in it. Uh, but this is just to show you where total abatement cost is, where the marginal abatement cost is, um, where unrestrained emissions are, and just a bit of the background behind the marginal abatement cost function. So uh, it would be handy to be able to draw this, but more importantly, it's very, you have to understand what's going on in this graph.